Welcome to today's top seven news updates for February 29th, 2024. From the Supreme Court to the budget, Mitch McConnell's spending retirement, and Leap Day. Let's get into it. First up, congressional leaders announced Wednesday that they had reached consensus on a temporary spending bill to prevent a partial government shutdown looming Friday. This agreement would prolong funding for certain government agencies until March 8th, with an extension for others until March 22nd. The leader said that they had resolved funding issues for six out of the 12 annual spending bills, aiming for these to be, quote, voted on and passed before March 8th. This interim measure, they explained, is to grant appropriators, quote, sufficient time to finalize this agreement in principle and to give lawmakers a chance to review the agreement's details. In a joint statement, they emphasized that, quote, it is imperative for Congress to act collaboratively to finance our government. This breakthrough sets the stage for the House vote Thursday to maintain government operations with the Senate anticipated to act promptly before the Friday midnight deadline. Second up, Biden and Trump have planned competing visits to the U.S.-Mexico border in South Texas. Highlighting immigration is a pivotal concern for Americans amidst the intensifying 2024 presidential campaign. Both candidates are eager to address the issue head-on. President Biden is set to meet with border control, law enforcement, and local officials in Brownsville, Texas, which is a hotspot for migrant influxes. On the other hand, Donald Trump in a Daily Mail op-ed declared his visit is to, quote, observe the erosion of American sovereignty, reflecting his stance on the current immigration challenges. Third up. The recent Alabama Supreme Court decision classifying frozen embryos as children has sparked significant controversy on both sides of the aisle by halting in vitro fertilization or IVF procedures across many clinics. This ruling places Republicans in a challenging position as they navigate the conflict between opposing fertilization practices that may harm embryos and then also continuing to maintain that their claim that their policies do not prohibit IVF. Amidst this contentious backdrop, Senator Tammy Duckworth, a Democrat from Illinois, whose two children were conceived through IVF, introduced legislation aimed at protecting these crucial reproductive technologies. However, her efforts were thwarted by Republican Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith from Mississippi, who labeled the bill as, quote, a vast overreach and downplayed the Alabama decision's impact on IVF, despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary. Number four, Republican Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, the longest-serving party leader in Senate history, announced on Wednesday his decision to step down as the GOP Senate leader after the November elections. McConnell cited a divergence in national security views, those rooted in Reagan-era principles, from the current direction under former President Donald Trump as the reason for his departure. Believe me, he said from the Senate floor, I understand the internal dynamics of my party at this juncture. I have my share of flaws, but misreading the political landscape within my party is not among them. Number five, on Wednesday, the Supreme Court of the United States, or SCOTUS, took on the case to determine if former President Trump has immunity against charges related to efforts to overturn the 2020 election, which would pause his criminal trial in the process. The court set arguments for late April, effectively freezing lower court proceedings and granting Trump a temporary win. SCOTUS's move aligns with Trump's broader legal strategy aimed at delaying his multiple criminal cases. This decision places the Supreme Court in a pivotal role of influencing not only Trump's immediate legal challenges, but also his future political endeavors, including the potential impact on his election chances and, if re-elected, his power to dismiss the charges. Number six, the death toll in Gaza has crossed a grim threshold with the local health ministry reporting over 30,000 casualties since the conflict began on October 7th. This surpasses the fatalities of any prior conflict between Arab forces and Israel, exceeding 20,000 deaths since December. Challenges in counting amid the ongoing conflict and infrastructure breakdown suggest this number might not fully capture the extent of the loss. With Gaza's population at approximately 2.2 million, the current death toll implies about one in every 73 residents has been killed. Seven, today is February 29th, otherwise known as Leap Day. And why do we have Leap Day? Leap years occur due to the discrepancy between our calendar year and the actual time it takes for the Earth to complete one orbit around the sun, as explained by NASA. Although we conventionally count a year as 365 days, the Earth's orbit around the Sun actually takes about 365 days and 6 hours. 
To account for this additional quarter day accumulation each year, we compensate by adding an extra day or 24 hours to the calendar every four years. So people born on leap day are called leaplings. A leapling takes center stage in the 1879 comic opera The Pirates of Penzance by Gilbert and Sullivan. In that opera, a character named Frederick is bound by duty to serve as a pirate until his 21st birthday. However, Frederick faces an unusual predicament due to his leap day birth, which means that his birthday is celebrated every four years and that he will presumably be indentured for over 50 years before he can be released from servitude. And I hope that you don't face that predicament. And that's all for today. Don't miss out on crucial updates. Like, share, and subscribe. And your comments below mean a lot to me. And, and I will see you tomorrow.